having uh, like a full kind of management um, system in place for the people is, a more, is as important as training the behaviors are, right? And a big part of that is, you know, don't keep letting your dog get in trouble and do these things. Your dog is bored, your dog has too much energy, you're not satisfying its needs, so of course it's going to find ways to satisfy its own needs and those are going to be things that are inappropriate. So a management routine, routine will include lots of exercise, mental stimulation as well as physical stimulation. You can't just, a treadmill by itself doesn't just do it, right? You have to make the dogs both physically and mentally tired and all those kinds of things. And so training helps satisfy the mental aspect of it. Um, I encourage people to get involved in, in some kind of activity with their dog if they have the time, but a lot of people are gonna be like, I don't wanna do that kind of stuff. Things like nose work and stuff, that's something that you should, uh, anybody that has a pet dog business, I would encourage them to learn about nose work um, and the potential for adding that to your business. And so if you have classes for your clients and that kind of thing, it's something that virtually any dog can do. So you can take anything from a Chihuahua to a Pug to a Great Dane, any dog can do nose work, you know? because you, you just have to motivate them for something, food or what, or, you know, a toy, anything, and you're just teaching, and dogs use their nose really naturally, and, and so these little hunt for stuff games are very mentally enriching for dogs and really easy to learn how to do, and really easy for any dog to participate in. Even dogs that have, uh, like, temperament problems that would prevent them from working in group classes or around other distractions, you can go set up a nose work thing in a garage and have the dog hunt for their, you know, the anise oil or whatever the heck you wanted to teach them to find kind of thing. And it, it provides them with something to do with their brain and, and an outlet. Those kinds of things are great if you can get people to be involved. But it's a, it's a read on the client and what they're going to be willing to do. So a big part of pet dog training, I think, is not having the ideal solution to the problem. It's having a solution that is able to be carried out by the people and the dog, and able and willing to carry out both things. And so I think my, I found when I was doing a lot of pet dog training that my evaluation of the people was more important than my evaluation of the dog. Like the dog is like, dogs are dogs, and yeah, okay, right. But are you gonna do what I ask you to do? What's your life like? How busy are you? How many kids do you have? Like what's your daily, how long, how many, what are your work hours? And are you gonna actually do the things you say you're gonna do? Because people are well-meaning, they may not be deliberately lying to you, but they'll say, oh yeah, sure, we'll do that. And you're like, you're not gonna do that. Like I can look around, look around your life, you're not doing that. So I need to come up with some other way of solving their problem. And some of those solutions are not, in my mind, the ideal solutions, but they're the ones that are gonna be carried out by that person. And if it's a nice dog and somebody is really not willing to do what they should do, then uh, I've advised a lot of people to, to try to rehome the dog and find a more suitable dog for their situation if they have a very active dog and that kind of thing. Um, but if, if it's a dog that's not gonna be easy to rehome and things like that, then and I have to come up with a solution that's less than perfect. I, may, I, I do use pressure more frequently with a pet dog to solve some kind of behavioral problem because the dog's going to wind up in the shelter or something like that. They're not going to, they're not a, la a nice Labrador, a nice golden retriever kind of thing. They're easily rehomed, right, to somebody. So if I assess a family and they're like, they're just not going to do, they're not going to deal with that dog's needs, then I say, you know, the, a lot of this stuff is maybe you don't need a dog right now or <laughs> maybe you need something else. And, and I would steer them in that way too. So I, all those options have to be on the table. But you, you're right, like frequently just giving the dog stuff to do, parting, put a little structure in their life, showing them how to do things, suddenly the dog's a lot better uh, in terms of a lot of the traditional behavior problems that are just rooted in boredom and too much energy and not enough stuff to do. <laughs>